All right, so far this quarter, we looked at time value of money, compounding interest. Um, we looked at the simple interest formula. Um, interest equals principal times rate times time. We've kind of uh, messed with the formula a little bit to see what happens to interest payments. And so now we're going to look at um, credit and, and really what is credit. And credit, when we, when we think of a very basic definition of credit, credit is an agreement to get money, goods, or services for a promise to pay in the future. So we get the things that we want today, and then we, we get to enjoy it today, but then we use credit to pay it slowly off into the future. The creditor is the one who's lending you the money, and the debtor is the one who's borrowing the money. So those are the two parties in the contract. The creditor is giving you money up front, and so then they're going to basically charge you for use of that money. And then obviously interest is creditors charge a fee for using their money, and that's, that's where interest comes from. It's the fee... It's the usury fee for borrowing money. All right, so who uses credit? Consumers. Um, we use it for, you know, for personal reasons to buy stuff. Um, we might get a loan for a car, for a house. Um, we might use credit cards to purchase items. Um, so consumer credit is one type of credit. Commercial credit is credit used by businesses. So businesses use credit to purchase the things that they need in order to produce. Remember when we, in first semester, we studied entrepreneurship, we talked about businesses. Businesses um, need money to produce the things that they, they want to sell, and so sometimes they're in a position where they need to borrow. Um, if you remember, like EcoMe, remember she was borrowing money um, to produce the household cleaning product, and they needed to borrow money in order to purchase the supplies to produce the product and run the business. So that, that, that is what commercial credit is. And then you have government credit. Um, right now we're seeing um, huge levels of government um, borrowing. You look at the federal government, they're, they're borrowing money to run the government. They're running at a deficit. And so in order to um, maintain solvency, the government goes out and borrows money um, and, and the Federal Reserve is kind of the one charged with, with doing that. So they work with the Treasury um, to make sure the Treasury is running the government's basically checking account, and then when they need money, they go to the Fed and borrow, and then the Fed will then go out and borrow money from other countries, from citizens, from investors, and then they use that borrowed money, they pass it over to the Treasury. So then the government tr credit is a, huge, um, is, is a huge borrower and user of credit. All right, so let's talk about some of the advantages. There are my happy pictures. Um, all right, so the first advantage, it's, it's really convenient. It's really convenient um, to have a credit card or, you know, where someone will pay for it. Um, you don't have to run out and get money. You don't have to have carry your checkbook around. So a huge advantage of credit um, is the convenience factor. Credit, to have credit available to you, it's good in emergency. Now, I've been teaching you to establish an emergency fund. But sometimes, um, you know, uh, you might be young, you might not have that emergency fund yet. The credit, if your car breaks down, something goes wrong, um, you could use it there. If you're unable to purchase stuff without it, sometimes, you know, when you fly, you need to have a, a credit card. You need to have that number to hold your reservation, um, to hold the hotel, to shop online. Um, you know, credit um, works well in those situations. And then, obviously, you have to establish a credit rating because... Now, theoretically, if you never borrow money for anything, your credit rating, one might argue, is irrelevant. But what we're seeing now is a lot of employers now are looking up your credit score before they hire you. They want to make sure that you're responsible with your own money before they charge you with, you know, handing over money to you in the company. They want to make sure you're not going to steal from the company. So credit rating is important to manage that credit rating, not only for to borrow money, but also for employment. Um, people uh, use credit to record um, expenses to keep track of what they're spending money on. And then, obviously, credit. Um, we look at the explosion of credit in our economy in the 80s, and you saw our economic output really exploded coincidentally with the use of consumer credit because now people are able to consume more because of credit. All right, there are some disadvantages now. There's the, um, the old circle crying, and the um, there's this... The downside there, they're not so happy. All right, so disadvantages. It, it's very tempting to buy things you can't afford. You People get in the mindset of, I, I will have it today, even though I can't afford it today, and I'll use credit to pay it off in the future. 
people um, will buy too much, specifically with credit cards. When you use credit cards, people will, will obviously spend more because they don't see the money physically leaving their wallet, their account, and so it just kind of tallies all the purchases for a month, and then you get this bill at the end, and sometimes um, people buy too much because they're not keeping track of, of their dollars. They buy things that they don't need because they have access to this money. They will sometimes buy things that they don't necessarily need. Um, and so we see that that is a disadvantage. Items cost more. Um, if we're constantly borrowing money and paying interest, um, that's going to cause the items that we're purchasing to become a higher price. And so if we're constantly using credit and we're paying uh, finance charges and interest charges, um, we're basically running up the tab on everything that we buy. Credit card bills pile up. We're un unable to obtain new credit. And so sometimes when the bills become too large, we kind of run out of resources. We exhaust our ability to borrow because we borrowed way too much. All right, types of credit. These are the ones that um, you're kind of familiar with. Um, charge accounts. Um, regular charge accounts pay, pay the purchase in 25 days. If not, we're going to charge you interest. That's kind of how regular charge accounts work. Revolving charge accounts allow you to borrow or charge up to a certain amount, and that's how credit cards work. So credit cards, you get a limit of, let's say, $10,000. As I spend money, let's say I spend $3,000, I still have $7,000 allowed to me. Once I make my payment, the, the limit revolves back up to $10,000. $10, um, budget charge accounts pay for cost items and equal payments spread out over a period of time. And, and what we see here, that kind of sounds like a car payment. You borrow money, and then you set up a series of equal payments. All right, so more specifically, let's blow up credit cards a little bit more here. Credit cards, remember, are evolving. They're used in different stores. Some have annual fees. Credit card companies earn money from the interest they charge. So it's, it's actually, that's the, I kind of have to update that. That's a little misleading in a way. When I have a Chase MasterCard, when I go to buy something, Chase Bank is fronting the money. MasterCard is providing the payment method. So what MasterCard, the way they make money, is they charge the merchant anywhere from 2 to 5% of the sale. So when I go into, let's say, um, um, let's say I go into Sports Authority and I spend $100 for a pair of shoes and I put it on my credit card, and I put it on my Master Credit Card, MasterCard, um, is going to see four dollars. Let's say it's a four percent fee is what they charge the merchant. The merchant is going to take uh, the hundred dollars they collect. They're going to send four dollars directly to the credit card company. So that's how the credit card company makes money. Now the other the hundred dollars that I owe back, if I don't pay back in time, they're going to start charging a, a finance charge on that, and that's that agreement is set up through the bank that kind of backs the card up. The credit card makes the car, credit card company makes money by late fees and things like that. Um, so when we look at that, um, there's a lot of money to be made um, by these credit card companies. Because think of all the stuff Americans are purchasing, and the businesses are, are paying anywhere from two to five percent of the sale. Now you could get a single purpose card that's only good at one store, like a Target card, and that was obviously in the news lately. Um, but the nice thing with uh, some store cards, they offer um, some nice benefits. So for the Target card example, here's a couple of good benefits. If you shop a lot at Target, you get 5% off of your, your sale. And then also if you buy stuff online, there's free shipping. And then if you ever return anything, you, it just goes back to the card. It's really no hassle. Um, Multi-purpose cards, you could use at multiple merchants. It would be like Visa, Discover, MasterCard. And then the initial credit card was actually in New York City. They had entertainment diners club cards where, um, you know, it allowed people to um, eat out more frequently. And then they would just put their bill on their diners club card. And that was kind of the initial use of credit um, in our country. Banks and, and, and other financial institutions, you're going to have single payment loans. You can have installment loans and mortgage loans. So installment would be like your car loans. Your mortgage loans would be like for real estate. Uh, single payment loans is, you know, you borrow money and then you just have one payment um, back. You don't see those too often um, personally, but that they are out there. Um, the ones you're definitely going to be seeing are installment loans and then the mortgage loans. 
Now, uh, consumer finance companies, um, if you have very poor credit and you can't borrow money, you could always go to what's called a consumer finance company. Um, if you're unable to get credit everywhere else, the, you could borrow from them, but the, remember, they're going to charge you a very, very high cost for use of that money. And then the worst type of credit is a, is a pawn shop. This is how a pawn shop works. Let's say I have a watch. I need money. Um, I go to the pawn shop, and they're going to give me the watch uh, uh, maybe is worth, let's say, 500 bucks. Um, they could maybe sell the watch. You know, they estimate they could sell the watch for 500 bucks. So what they do is they give you $200 for the watch, okay? Because they're gonna they're gonna now hold on to this watch for 30 days or 50 days, and then I if, if they gave me 200, I could buy it back for 250 in the, in the next 50 days or whatever the contract is. So if I buy it back at, at $250 and they gave me 200, I just pay 25% interest but remember that's all over a very short period of time so that's a very high high interest rate now if i don't buy it back within 50 days now the pawn shop is free to sell the watch to other people and so now they're going to take that 200 dollar watch that they pay 200 for and they might sell it for four or five hundred bucks and they just made a big profit on that so they make a lot of money there um, and so those pawn shops are very very high interest loans you want to stay away from those and then the borrow until payday loans, those are also kind of a bad idea, um, where you borrow your next, pay before you get paid, you're basically borrowing your paycheck, um, so you want to stay away from those. So credit card companies are constantly marketing. Um, they create incentives, cash back, airline miles. Um, they find the target market they're trying to reach, and they specifically create the card for that target market or that geographic area. Um, they they create brands on the cards. People get hooked on, you know, having a Chicago Bears Master Card, um, and so there's a lot that goes into um, into a, into creating a card. So your assignment today, you got two pieces. One is I want you to look up how a how a credit score is calculated, and I want you to write a summary on that. Um, so it's called the five C's of credit. And if you just go online and do a Google search, is how is your credit score calculated? And I want you to dig in there and, and kind of come up with a, a page summary on how a credit score is calculated. And then the second thing I want you to do, and, and you could do this in, um, you could also do it in, in, a, in a basically a Google document, you could create a credit card concept. So create a card, come up with some incentives, a target market, geographic area, demographic, and a brand for your card. And um, what I'm looking for you to do is to make like a magazine ad, make like a one-page magazine ad of that credit card. So those are the two things you got to do today. What are the um, what goes into your credit score, and then a magazine advertisement of a credit card of your choice. All right, have fun and good luck.